Boom, this your boy Joe Black High End Radio. My co-host Mr. Caper couldn't make it today, but I got a very special guest on the line. One of the originators, I'd like to say, as far as when it comes to this gangster rap and really being from them streets and putting it down, uh, then hopped in the movies, just all around real dude, man, uh, a gangster and a gentleman. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. C.J. Mack. Thank you, thank you, bro, bro. Thank you for having me, bro. Thank you for having me. It's been almost a year since I've been trying to contact you, but you still be moving and busy and doing your thing. Yeah, I've been grinding, man. I've been out here really, really trying to smash, you know, lately and getting, getting involved in a bunch of projects from uh, television and, and uh, film and uh, some animation and a bunch of different things with, with some of my partners, man. So I've been, like, ripping the rain, like, constantly. Right, right. Let's take it back to the beginning, man. Color me funky. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been listening. Wow, I've you been listening that long. <laughs> Hey, man, you know what? I'm proud of that record, man. That's me trying to get my feet wet, right? You know, I was out here, you know, in the streets, man, hustling and doing all that, you know what I mean? And then I always had a love for rap since the first time I heard it, man. As a matter of fact, man, you know, I was sitting on my bunk, man, in juvenile hall, right? Right. <laughs> At East Lake, right? And uh, I heard it's like the jump sometimes. It makes you want to child boy, no state of mind. I said, man. Right. That's the type of rap that hit me, right? So when I, I was in the streets hustling and everything and had acts coming out like uh, WA or stuff like that, man, I was like, okay, well, that's cool, you know? But I thought the originators was the 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 the, the uh, New York cats, you know what I'm saying, at the time. So I kind of was trying to be like Dick Big Daddy Kane and LL Cool J and them. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but, but bars, though. Hey, but you know it was it was good work, but you know it wasn't really me. I was just trying to be an entertainer. I was trying to come off the streets and be an entertainer. You know what I mean? And that wasn't really my thing. But I, it got me a lesson. I went to Atlanta. I learned how to put records out independently. I did that solely out of my pocket. You know what I mean? And I learned the game. And then I came back home. You know what I mean? And Mix Match Spade kind of showed me the way and put me on. And you know, then I said, okay, cool. It's, it's okay to be me to a certain extent. Right, right, without incriminating yourself. Hey, you see, you get it. You feel me? I always tell people I apologize for not really uh, giving them my all when it came to my street knowledge because I can't rap about my trap, bro, because I was still in it. Absolutely. You feel me? I come from the game of he who is the best last the longest. But then I got into a game where the big mouth mind rapper wins. Okay, for sure. For, and, 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 get to, and get the ten million dollar deal at the end. All right, so, so it was a hard adjustment for me, even back then. You know what I mean? It is crazy because you from that era where lyrics meant everything, right? And you were one of those ones. I don't know. Is it fair to say you kind of were slept on? Well, I think there was a there was a combination of things that people don't really know. Like, you know, um, I was uh, I came out at a time where, you know, there was a lot of people around that were like kind of like telling on certain things, and my name was popped up in a lot of stuff, bro. And so I had like inv investigations on me and, and all kind of stuff within my musical career. They didn't believe that I was a rapper. It was like, nah, uh, not him. Right. So I was being paid for other things. And being, uh, I'm going to really say hell back on a lot of levels. Like, I was told this by different people at the radio stations and stuff like that. Like, I had a single that was popping. Come and check it out. I was popping. Oh, yeah. But I couldn't, get, I couldn't get added to the regular playlist in Los Angeles just to make show. There was mix show on me to death, but I couldn't get on. But one of the radio just died. I won't name him. He said, you know. Certain people came up there and said I had to monitor. So I mean, it's a whole lot of crazy stuff that went on with that man. So it's just part of the game. You know what I mean? I didn't fit the regular criteria for all that. You know, at the time. Well, for us cats who was in the streets listening to that, we was fucking with it. Period. I, mean, I, I appreciate it, and, and all that's all I could do is give my all. You know what I mean? 
Right. Now, now let's get to the project that I feel opened up a gang of eyes and ears, and that's that Platinum Gang. Right. Um, Platinum Gang uh, was uh, my favorite was True Gang with rapper, but actually, even though I would say my my, my lyrical skills were better on Platinum Gang, the True Gang was just really, really from my heart. And, uh, you know, it was dear to me. I lost a lot of friends on that song. I let my niggas up in and all that because all of those things was happening. You know, my partner suspension, you know, 25 and 30 years, man, you know, for, for, for hustling. I mean, not killing nobody, not having guns, but, you know, for hustling. You know what I mean? I mean, well, we just watched the lady in 2019 get 10 years for murder. So, I mean, I got friends that did 25 years and 23 years for, you know, drugs, you know what I mean, like, it's, it's, it's just don't add up, and I said it back then, you know what I mean, it's, it's lyrics I said in that song about them legalizing, I was talking about cocaine at the time, like, if they legalized it, decided they could control it and tax it, it would no longer be a crime, but people were doing time for it, so guess what, same thing happened with alcohol, alcohol was banned at one point, they figured out they could control it, tax it, now it's legal, you know, it's killing people, drunk drivers and all that, right, so what they do? Now marijuana's legal. I got homies that sat in the penitentiary for 14 years over marijuana. Now, you're a corporation, you can sell tons of marijuana, and it's okay. That's, that's, that's crazy. But I predicted that way back in 95, you know what I mean? Right. So, so that was really, uh, I really got loose on that one. I was a little bit light on Platinum Game, in my own opinion of myself, if I'm you know, you know, you know, going to assess myself. I'm going to say I was a little light with Platinum Game, but... I still enjoy the record. I have fun doing. Absolutely, and 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 in that period of time, it also brought forth, you know, your acting career. Yes. And you know, thicker than water. I can't never watch it enough. I mean, it brings me to another point, CJ, because you came up doing your thing in the era when gangs was heavy and rough and active. Right. So how did you and Mac Ten bridge that gap at that time? Well, we didn't look at each other like that, man. Like, see, I, I'm a, I, I'm this way, and I've always been this way. Um, I'm a judge a man for being a man. I don't really care where you're from. If you're a man, you're a man. Now, if you want to go there on some other level, then it is what it is. But I'm gonna respect every man as a man first. You know, what I mean, just because he's born ten blocks from me, bro, like that's kind of like crazy for me to to hate a, a man off top. You feel me? Like, that never really sat well with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm like, I'm not automatically hate you because your mom lived 10 blocks away from me when she was born, when, when you were born. That's that's kind of, you know what I mean? That's kind of crazy. Right. So, I judge men by men. And me and Matt Ken, we kind of like sat down at the same time and said, hey man, whichever one of us get on, you know what I'm saying? We're going we gonna to look out for the other. You know what I mean? I was like, all right, cool. And his, uh, he got a, a bigger shot than me early with uh, Priority Records. So I'm one of the first people we came to got. He kept his word on that, and I was one of the first people we came to got after I got out of my rap a lot deal. That's dope, man. That's that's real dope, man, because keeping it 100 don't really too much exist a lot anymore. So for that to happen then, in the midst of it all, that was really dope. You didn't catch no slack. Neither one of y'all caught no slack from y'all's hoods, did y'all? Well, you know, it didn't kind of matter. You know what I mean? It's like, right. you know, you know it, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. You know what I'm saying? It got testy at times. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it got testy at times, but, you know, it is what it is, man. I'm going to be a man first, man. No one will ever take that from me, bro. I'm going to be a man 100% first. Absolutely. Respect. And now, yeah. now, on a different twist, that was your first time meeting Fat Joe doing the movie, correct? Yeah, man, Fat Joe, super solid dude, man, to this day. You know, we talk every now and then, we got a great relationship, man. And, uh, man, that's my guy, man, Joey Crack, man, that, that's my dude, man. He's a real solid dude from New York, took care of us real well in New York, <clears throat> you know what I mean, and showed us the same love we showed him. Uh, I'm always be, uh, be a fan with him, man. No doubt, that's what's up. Yeah, I, I just saw a clip from back in the day with all with you, Mac Ten and Fat Joe all posted clowning, so I can tell that the relationships were authentic and genuine. So that's Oh the- yeah. Yeah, it was solid, man. He a real straight dude, so a lot of people might not think that. Uh 
uh, you know, from the rapping and, and all that. But Joe, Joe Solid, man, he was a real solid guy, really respected out there in New York. And, uh, you know, he made sure he was good. So does the big homie CJ still hop in the whip and throw on some hip-hop? Oh, yeah, man. I'm a, man, I, man I, I love rap, man. <laughs> you know what right. I mean? I love it, man. That'll never go nowhere, man. I'll be, man, I'll be, be God bless, I can be 90 still listening to hip hop. That's what I grew up on, you know what I mean? So, oh yeah, man, I'm, I'm still with it, man. I'm supportive of all the youngsters. Um, all the kids in, in my area, really, especially, man, they all super talented, man. You know, rest in peace, you know, losing my little army. Yeah, but man, it's another other little bunch of soldiers that's trying to carry and pull away from them, man. And they all tight, man. Packs, man. You know, G.I. Joe, uh, uh, Jay Stone, Stone, uh, 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 Conrad, Newport, you know what I mean, Rody Rose, you know what I mean, if I'm forgetting anybody, forgive me, but they all talented, man, I support every last one of them. Did you get a chance to work with them? Yeah, yeah, you know what, with Nip? Yes. No, we never did any songs, man, I think him and Game did a song, they mentioned my name. But we never got a chance to, to really do anything. At the time when Nipsey was out there, man, and I'm a Nipsey fan to the fullest. I bought more pimps every day right now still. Me too. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really interested in rapping anymore, man. Like, that wasn't that wasn't my passion at the time. Around when Nip was really, really doing his thing, it's like I really didn't care about rapping at all. You know what I mean? I was heavy into my movie and film writing. Uh, I mean, my TV and film writing. So I... I that just wasn't my passion, you know what I mean? But we talked and kicked and had love for each other. But I just, that wasn't my thing. Well, I've always been interested in, my love, my passion is just putting a pen to a blank piece of paper and creating something, whether it's a rap, whether it's a, a television show, whether it's a movie or a book. That's my little thing. I love it. Like, I love taking, making something out of nothing. So that blank piece of paper in front of me is what it is. So it might change on what I feel like doing. Like if I want to rap, if I want to write a television show and try to get that on the air, if I want to do this, you know. So it's all creativity to me. It's the same thing. But my focus just wasn't on rapping anymore. My focus was just really on doing that. I was directing videos. I directed Scarface video, Never Seen a Man Cry, Until I Seen a Man Die, back in 94. I directed that video, brother. So I've been doing this, you know what I mean? And, and Jay Prince always encouraged me, like, man, you're a movie dude, man. Like, your vision is just crazy. Even the songs I used to write, think about the stories, it was visuals. There was, like, movies, you know what I mean? So I've always been interested in that. So, now nah, it's just, I probably changed my focus, but that's not when I got the idea. I've been, I was a kid that sat at home by myself, man, when my mother was at work, bro, like, watching TV and movies. I'm one of them kids. You know what I'm saying? Right. No, don't open the door for nobody. You know what I'm saying? Right. From 3 to, 3 to 11 at night, you know, eight years old. I'm one of them kind of kids. Okay, 80s baby. Yeah. Okay. Now, I'm going to keep it clean. That's lightweight, self-explanatory. Yeah, exactly, right? People would think that title, 80s baby, means, you know, that I'm saying I'm an 80s baby. You're talking about the 80s baby. No, I'm talking about the 80s baby. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so, yeah, you know, time when it was at all-time high, man, you know what I mean? So, you know, I took a little, doing a little period piece, taking it back to the 80s and uh, telling my story. You know, parts of it, you know, uh, are definitely uh, pages from my life. You know what I mean? So it's a really interesting book, great little read. You know, I, I use fictional characters, including myself. You know what I mean? I, I use uh, fictional characters, man, because I didn't want uh, anyone to think that, uh, you know, first of all, the game is be sold, not told. I'm not going to tell nobody the story. You know, I'm going to tell my own. You know what I mean? If you happen to be surrounding me, if someone that was around me at the time, you know, you might feel some, some familiar things. Right, <laughs> right. 
obviously influenced by the East Coast hip hop and, and the bars and the wordplay, but you made it your own eventually. Right. What do you feel as a consumer that hip hop is missing right now? Well, I think what is missing is coming back now, actually. I'm actually I'm actually a little pleased with where where rap is uh where rap is headed now. Like people are back to actually saying something. You know what I'm saying? I think there's a lot of, uh, I think, I, don't get me wrong, I don't knock the kids with the fun stuff and everything because that's their era, you know what I mean? Like, I would never knock another era of hip-hop just because I don't understand it. Like, when I was when I was rapping, you know, we were cursing and, 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 and stuff in the Grandmaster Flash and Furious Five, which was my favorite group. Melly Mel was my favorite artist. You know, he wasn't cussing in his music and stuff, and he probably didn't like the fact that we wasn't saying, oh, Right. You know what right. They, they whack. They not saying rock. You know what right. I'm saying? So, so the kids of today, you know what I mean? You know, we think they whack because of what they're saying, the way they deliver their stuff. But they, they, they understand it. They talk to each other and they understand it. So I don't knock it. You know what I'm saying? So, but I am pleased to see that a lot of artists are actually saying something now. Like, like I think even I think Nipsey really inspired a lot of the youngsters to start saying something too because now they talking about stuff man they back talking about subject matter now man things that's counting streets and, and motivation and trying to get it you know what I mean mm-hmm. so I'm happy with where, where rap is headed now actually but that's what has been has been missing to me for a long time just kind of like substance right but I think it's coming back I think substance is, is back a lot of these kids they saying something now What's your take on, you know, social injustice and the overall look of the country right now? Mm-hmm. Well, I think we're in a bad place, man. I think that, uh, you know, I think uh, hatred and hate crimes is probably at an all-time high right now. You know, I don't know the statistics, but I think uh, it's uh, up 300% um, hate crimes, racial hate crimes up at least about 300% since... Uh, in the last, let's just say, in the last two years, right? So I think that we're in, we're in a terrible place right now, man. I think uh, that uh, it's just a really, really trying time, man. And, and a lot of people are telling us just who they are. They're not shooting talking anymore. So they're telling us exactly who they are. And so I don't mind a person telling me exactly who they are. You know, I'd rather you let me know than to be sneaky anyway, so... I just think the times are changing and it's changing for the worse right now. Yeah, I have to agree with you on that because I, I recall years before Trump was president, everyone used him in their song. I want that Trump money. I'm going to be rich like Trump. Uh, yeah. yeah, niggas don't want to be affiliated with Trump now. <laughs> <laughs> Man, throughout the course of your career, CJ, is there any regrets? Um, No. No, because I'm still standing, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm still, I'm still here. I'm still standing. So, not, not one, man. You know what I mean? Not, not, not nothing I've ever been through do I regret. You know, because it all makes me who I am today, and it's all God's plan. And it's, it's, it's. I think I believe that it's all carved out before I do anything to it anyway. You know what I mean? I just have to act accordingly and make certain choices to stay on the road. To, to, to stay on my path. I just got to make the right choices. You know, you got we got free will. It's like, you can do this or you can do that. You just got to be conscious enough to think before you act and just go on and keep living life, man. I, uh, God bless you with a beautiful life. So I don't have any regrets. Personal, none of that. Oh, for sure. For sure. I, I had no clue you spent some time on Death Row Records. Well, that's something that... uh people uh kind of took out of context i didn't actually i uh i did a song i was kind of like into it with uh with uh the camp over there some of the people that left and whatever i was into it with them on my own it didn't have anything to do with that from then i did a song and then when i did the song should well a bunch of rest in peace took the song over to uh should night through one of my partners out of san diego named tata and uh, they heard the song. They were like, whoa, man, CJ seemed like he was right here, like a fly on the wall over here. No, what's going on? You know what I mean? Right. So they ended up saying, well, I was putting the song out myself. And they were like, well, let us have a song. So then they actually bought the song from me. 
It's not like I did the song for Death Row. They, they bought the song from me. That the I ain't fucking with you song. They bought it from me and they put it out. And I said, okay, well you giving me some money and I don't have to spend no money putting it out. Go ahead. You know what I mean? <laughs> Okay. So, so, so Sug and I, we talked though. Like I went to go visit him a few times when he was in Mule Creek Prison, and uh, he wanted me to sign a death row, but I just told him that our interest was a little bit different, and that probably wouldn't work out. Yeah, it's like you know, that probably ain't gonna work. But uh, but but I love Sug, man. He's a good dude, man. You know what I'm saying? I said a song before. I got love for Sug and Snoop. You know what I'm saying? I think it's very unfortunate what happened with, you know, Terry Carter, the guy's my guy, you know what I mean? But, uh, but, uh, Suge's not, you know, I mean, he's a good dude, man, me. So I, I'm not on the Suge hair team or nothing like that. Right. But Def Row and I, I didn't think Def Row and I would work out. It probably wouldn't have, you know, some of the rumors, uh, I don't know, you know, things probably would be too cool for me being over there. You know what I'm saying? So, so, so you spent most of your recording career on who banging and independently? You know, rap a lot records first. Rap, rap a lot, uh, boom. Okay. Rap, we are independent. On my first album was on rap a lot records. Um, you know, when I did the Friday soundtrack and all that was Scarface and different things like that. And then I was on, uh, and then I was on who bang? Would, how did it, you even it. connect with rap a lot being from L.A.? and really just getting started in the game. Well, Jay Prince was in L.A., and he was in my neighborhood. He was looking for talent. And so we was at my, one of my homeboys named G.B., rest in peace. We was at his house playing dominoes. And uh, and uh, he actually was at, talking to Papa L.Q. at the time also. So we were all over there, and people were over there, like some of my homeboys just auditioning for all rapping and all that. I was playing dancing some dominoes. And I say this every interview, I was booking him, I was smacking his head real good with the dominoes, right? Mm. And then some, one of my homeboys said, CJ rap? And he was like, for real, you rap? I was like, yeah. And then I rapped a song called Powder Puff to him. You know what I mean? Right. And he's like, man, you got, he's like, you got more music? I said, yeah, I got a house in Moreno Valley. It's going to take us about an hour and a half. It's like two, three in the morning, but you know, you can come out tomorrow. He said, no, nah, let's go now. Mm. So we drove away to Moreno Valley. He heard my music and stuff, and he drove back to L.A., a couple weeks later, man, you know, uh, I was in Chicago doing some things, probably shouldn't have been doing. He gave me a call and said, uh, man, come fly to Houston, man. I, I got I got, I got, I want, got a record deal for you. So I flew to Houston, man, and, and he gave me the same amount of money I had laying around in the streets that was a little tricky for me to get, man. And I said, you know, I'm going to change my life today. Boom. You know what I mean? I'm going to change my life today, man. This man got a record deal for me, and I got down there, and he had a record deal for me, man. And, you know, I haven't been back to doing certain things since. That's what's up, man. That's And, and that leads me to my next question. Damn, it's like you just bringing them. Um... What do you say to the young homies out there in the streets, still active, pushing they set? I mean, everybody got to, they love their community. I love my community. I love all my homeboys. But it's just time. Well, I'm a grown man, though. You know what I mean? So, you know, when we young, man, sometimes you, 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 your, your, your anger and, and, and your loyalty and all that is misplaced sometimes, man. And I don't fault nobody for loving their community, loving their hard boys. And, you know, they got to get, you know, they got to get along through each day with them for whatever reason. They, they're struggling or whatever, man. Sometimes, you know, that's your family. So I don't knock that, bro. It's just pushing the line on each other out here. It's kind of like, it's kind of like crazy at this time, especially when you see that everybody else is treating you like you're the lowest on the totem pole. So to go out and hurt somebody else that could potentially stand up next to you, like a lot of like like a lot of brothers find out once they get in a penitentiary, somebody they hated got to walk with them, child, make sure they don't get stuck. You know what I mean? Yes, so it's really like that out here. It's really like that in society. It's really like that out here. Like we need each other. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm not on this phone. You didn't you didn't hit me about an interview and I say, yeah, where you from though? Right. If that how ignorant would that be for me to do that? You feel me? Like. Like, I don't know where you're from. I don't care, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, you, you're a brother that asked me to do an interview. Let's do this. You know what I'm saying? Like, 
and that's what we really need out here with, from each other. We don't need all that busting on each other, shooting each other, bro. Like, that shit is, like, ridiculous, man, right now, man, especially when everybody else is gunning us down. Right, right. So I just, I, mean, I hope somebody, I hope people wake up, man. I hope, you know, somebody, you know, that with some responsibility, somebody with a voice, you know, could really, really be active and try to teach the kids, man, that it ain't about that, man. You know, certain things, man, when I was a kid, right, it was certain things that you knew if you went to jail for doing this, you was gonna have problems up in there, right? Yes, sir. And I think, I think killing another dude of your own kind for no reason should become one of those things that you have problems with when you get to the penitentiary. And I think it's the law now. I totally agree. Like you just said, a violation against our own kind should be a violation once you hit the module. You know what I'm saying? I mean, that's just kind of what I feel, you know what I mean? But, uh, you know, who am I? You know what I'm saying? I mean, <laughs> hey, hey you, you ain't still here for nothing, big homie. Straight up, <laughs> you know, we're not here for nothing. What can we, what's new? What's, what's coming next, man? The new CJ Mack album? Another well, book, well, I, well, I tell you what, well, I tell you what, I do got something for you. you know, I'm finally going to release this book that I've been waiting for every release. I got a, a couple of film projects I can't go in depth with, but Snoop Dogg is my partner on an animation project. Uh, Mia Long is my partner on another project. And uh, Matt Barnes and I have a basketball uh, television series that we're developing right now. So I've been heavy into that, man. And then I decided that... Uh, you know, I got the rapping bug again, man. After all these years, I'm doing a project with an artist, but two projects actually. One with a, both with a producer by the name of Cavi, and uh, it's called Grown Man Business. So what I'm doing is I'm talking to the 35 to 50 year olds, man. I'm not talking to the kids. I'm not trying to compete. I'm not trying to be no rapper. I just had the ability to still do this. And uh, so we do got a project that's coming out amazing, man. And I'm talking and coming from from the aspect of, you know, someone my age and the stuff that I should be talking about. I can't talk about little kid shit. You know what I mean? And I'm also not down to be uh, a 90s rapper in 2019 still being a 90s rapper. I don't want to do that. I want to be me right now, today, and talk about subjects and topics that people don't talk about in rap. And the shit that I should be saying at this age. And it's really, really coming off. But we got like an amazing record. You know, I'm going to invite you down to the studio, you know, when you get a chance to check us out. So I got another project with cocaine called oh. Baker Soap in the Water. To where we kind of taking it back, you know what I mean? Oh. And talking about the game. You know, we kind of talking about the game. It's called Baker Soap in the Water. The cat produced that as well. So, man, I'm on my thing right now, man. And like I said, movies, film, books. I'm just gonna do it all, you know what I mean? We're gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna we gonna swing for it right now. You know, I'm not my, my creativity is taking me. Man, I can't wait for any of it to drop. Your bars from back then, you can put them on today. You don't have a yeah. 90s style. <laughs> you got, you got, you got top five MCs dead or alive, CJ. Ah man, uh man, two power. Z, mm. and top five. Ooh, that's difficult, man. You hit me with that one quick, too. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not necessarily in that order, all right? Right, absolutely. Tupac, Jay-Z. I'm definitely a Snoop Dogg fan. question, man, because I'm gonna I can't name everybody. I'm trying to be fair here and really, really go off the top of my brain. Where I'm at? Three? Yep. Two more people? You got two more. Current? Oh, it don't matter, right? It don't uh, matter. And I think Carol is one was dope. Boom. Uh, what is that? Four? Yep. Fuck it, I'm gonna give you six. You know why. <laughs> all right, all right. Because uh, uh, mm. to me, this, your era has the dopest MCs. I'm taking up the whole interview with this. Day. Okay, let me see. Okay, Tupac, um, Jay Z, um, KRS One, Snoop Dogg. Uh, one more kid's 
last two spots too. Uh, wow, Ice Cube. Oh, Nipsey, my mind tripping, bro. Yeah, it's Nipsey, man. I'm on my mind, man. I love Nip, bro. I still listen to Nip, like I said, every day, man. man. I go to the gym, I'm listening to Nipsey, bro. Leave the gym, I'm listening to Nipsey. Yeah, yeah. So that's real, man. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah,